10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the WTH Breakout, episode number 16. I am one of your hosts, Tommy, and I'm joined here with uh, my my furry friend, Wilson. Wilson, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, dude. You know, yeah. it was a kind of a rough week, you know, just, I don't know, man, just kind of stressed out, but it was slow for me. I don't know why. It's just kind of it's nice to have a weekend right now, but yeah. How's it going up there? You you look blurry, dude. You feeling okay? I don't know what's going on with this camera. Maybe it's all this weird lighting in here. Maybe gotta your computer. Got to find a new spot to do this at. Maybe your Corona uh, or your computer got the, the old Corona. Yeah, something like that. You didn't run your McAfee on it and get rid of it. Oh, I got it. It's going. <laughs> so before we get into the show, I wanted to plug some... Uh, um, some cool things uh you guys are probably aware we or not aware we have a youtube um channel so i think ever since episode number seven i think we've uh we've recorded videos with these episodes and we put them on there uh so a lot of the things you you can't really see or we're laughing about or we're showing it's because you know you can't really see it when it's on audio but we're um you know, we, we have, there's only a few episodes that aren't on there. Those are usually the solo shows like with me. Um, and the then, ones where you just got lazy. Dude, I hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the ones where, uh, like if I got, well, yeah, I was lazy, but I don't really, I feel weird at just being me, you know? Um, so those are on there. Um, be cool if you guys go subscribe on there. Um, and then you get up to date on there. And then, we also have some videos uh, that have outtakes that aren't on the show. Cause there's a lot of stuff that gets edited out of these shows um, that I'll leave in that are funny. Like episode 13 the, at the very end, we had some outtakes of us messing around with our zoom backgrounds and you were hiding in the grass and everything. It was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so go check that out. And that's all at the real WTH show. Um, and then uh also, we want him up front. Just wanted to plug MSR Arms again. Um, he, uh, he. Did you see that picture of his turkey he got the other day? Yeah, I'm a little mad about that. Not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah. Well, let him hear it. He's gonna hear this episode. How do yeah. you? Feel about it? We were supposed to go hunting. Mm. Him, him, and I. And all of a sudden, you know, there's just a picture of him with the turkey, but not with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fail, Ryan. Fail. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you'll go again sometime when when you're allowed to. Yeah, when I get an invite. <clears throat> yeah, we just put them on blast. Shots fired. Ooh. Yeah. So, but yeah, we wanted to plug him up front um, and just you know go to msrarms.com and um, take a look at uh, his inventory and build yourself something. And you you said the other day you're you're about ready to finish up your um, monster. My my part of it, yes, and then we have to get together and talk about what else is going to go on it. Yeah, I can't wait till uh, um, you get that done. I want to see it. Oh, actually, I I, I want to shoot it so bad. I, I've only shot one uh, AR in my life. Um, that was, gosh, two thousand seven, I think. And I just I'm like, man, I love it. Those are fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. And so, hopefully I get to shoot a deer with it. Like I said before, dude, just go to the store and buy it. Uh, you can't now. Why? Remember, there's a meat shortage now? Yeah, well. <laughs> is there, there isn't. 
there's, but, yeah, there's not. It's a meat shortage with like one company with Tyson. But yeah, I, I think Trump like did something where he like um, is giving them funding or something like that to keep it going so that doesn't happen. Yeah, so it was like some sort of emergency legislation on that. But um, yeah, so. We're just going to go ahead and uh, jump right into it. Um, our world uh, famous segment, it's going to be our beers and cheers. Oh, it doesn't matter because you didn't do it. The screen wasn't on me. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you're pouring it, dude. Good job. Yeah. You captured that sound great. Yep. <laughs> so um, today, uh, I'll just start with mine since mine is a little bit easier. Once again, I'm drinking my AHA water. It is the blueberry pomegranate, and it is delicious. And it should taste like zombie Skittles because you just bumped your microphone on that one. Dude, you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe you heard that. I yeah. barely tapped it. Um, what, are you drinking Robitussin? No, it's, um, it's naked juice. Oh, it's like a square bottle. I'm like, dude, hey, easy, man. I know times are tough right now, but holy crap. <laughs> Chill out. It's the only way to fight the COVID. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Don't take that as medical advice. I know. You just need to inject bleach. That's what you're <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> um, so what are you drinking? Or not drinking right now because you go to work in a few hours. What have you drank uh, recently? Um, so my wife picked this up. I forget where it was at but she found it and it's by a brewery that i'm familiar with out of cooperstown new york because what else is in cooperstown oh you know the old, good old hall of fame um but this one is by i don't know how you pronounce it but it's like omagang omagang ermagerd or, yeah something like that um, but they're the same people that they were coming out with like specialty Game of Thrones beers during like when Game of Thrones was still going on. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I got a few of those beers. So that's how I know these guys. But this is called Neon Rainbow or Neon Rainbows IPA. Yeah. Um, and it says it's a New England style IPA. But then it also says Farmhouse Series at the bottom. So I don't know if that has anything to do with like the flavor of it because it tastes like in like, like a fruity IPA, but then it's also got kind of like a different flavor in the background. It's almost kind of sweet a little bit. Um, but it says it has uh, tropical fruit, citrus and hints of pine. And it's got four different kinds of um, hops in it. Pine. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah um 6.7 percent alcohol and serve at 40 degrees is what it says oh so do you actually have to take a temperature or yeah yeah you, it, it's like trying to work with the covid going on you got to go and take your temperature every single time i hate that <laughs> yeah it's getting old so uh what do you give that it's um uh, it's good it's different it it almost reminded me of that weird IPA that uh, Chris brought from Germany. Oh, okay. It almost had that kind of flavor to it. Um, I like it. I mean, it's not the greatest thing I've ever had. I'd probably give it like a 3.75. 3.75 for the neon rainbows. Yeah. See, when I think of the neon rainbows, I would automatically think of like a, um, you know, like sweet, fruity flavor. But remember the gummy bear you tried? Gummy worms? Oh, gummy yeah. worms. And it didn't, didn't it taste like, like gummy worms at all? Yeah. So like, I mean, so this one has more of that flavor than the gummy worms, maybe? Yeah. This, like you would imagine a giraffe eating a rainbow and somebody milking it. <laughs> Have you have you not seen that commercial? No, I thought you just most that. most you disgusting, <laughs> most disgusting Skittles commercial I've ever seen. Oh, I've se I'll send you one later that I saw. It's uh, not safe for anyone. Oh, okay. I think someone I think someone made it. It's, oh. It definitely wasn't a commercial, or it wasn't aired here at least. 
Um, so cool. So with that being said, we're going to do our, our heroes, um, or cheers and, uh, or cheers. And, you know, I want to, uh, cheers. Um, there's this band. I'm not sure if you heard of them. Um, they're called the ghost inside and, um, back in, I don't know how many, how long ago it was, um, a year or two ago, um, the band was on tour and, um, they got in a bad accident. And when, um, so they I think they had like most, some bands, they don't, they don't tour in tour buses. They tour in, uh, uh, vans. I'm not sure if they were in a van or a tour bus. I can't remember, but, um, we all remember Metallica. Uh, they all got in that bad, um, bus accident and then their bassist died. Um, but in this case, um, none of the band members died. Uh, the band's driver, um, and the occupants of the other uh, car were killed, but the drummer, he uh, lost his leg. He had to get, he had to get cut off. Um, and then the singer had multiple fractures and the guitarist, uh, had like 13 surgeries, um, for like femur, um, something wrong with his femur. But, um, when, when something like that happens, usually you just call it quits. Well, that's it. That's the end of the band. And I look at bands like Def Leppard who their drummer lost his arm in a car accident and they didn't stop. I mean, now they're still there. I mean, if anything, it showed like courage and strength and just, you know, willing to just like, when you fall off that horse, you're going to pick yourself back up again and you know, you're good to go. Um, but the band just released a new song and um, they're back. And what's funny, cause they're, they're a hardcore band. So they're right up my alley with, uh, I'm, I was actually a fan of them before the accident. And so they're very, very heavy, double bass screaming and everything. And, uh, you listen to the new song. I'm like, wow, I can't like tell a difference. Like they, it's like they never left. So, I mean, obviously with stuff like that, like the drummer had to learn how to drum with a prosthetic leg. And I think it's his dominant leg. I believe it was his right leg, which is um, the leg. If you're a, you know, a right-handed drummer, that's the leg you're going to be using most. So it, it's, there was a lot of, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, recuperation and just like physical therapy that had to go along with that. But it's just inspiring, you know, seeing stuff like that. Um, someone, you know, have a tragedy and bounce back from it. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, cheers the entire band, the ghost inside and um, their song that came out um, that they just released is called aftermath. Um, if you're not into heavy screaming and stuff, you may not like it, but, um, if you are check it out, the ghost inside aftermath, it's on Spotify right now. So let's go ahead and cheers my guy. Okay. Cheers. Bink. Good job. Robitessin for you. I might need it. Um, I was also, since we're doing like the cheers thing, I was looking up on officer down and do you remember what the date was that we recorded last time? Um, yeah, I could look it up. Uh, it would have been last Saturday. That would have been the 25th. 25th. Of April. Okay. So since last Saturday, there's only been one more line of duty death. Which it's sad saying only. Yeah. Because normally there's like three four um but uh yeah only one so far it looks like this week did unless they say, haven't updated the page did it say how um this was on sunday oh there were two i'm sorry two on sunday um uh he, one was shot it was glendale Huddle, Huddo Jr. Um, he was shot with a rifle. And then Deputy Sheriff John Andrew Roden um, was vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Cheers to those guys, too. Cheers to them. Um, and then also, uh, I don't know if you know this, Tommy. I'm assuming you do because I saw you posted some. I think you posted something on Instagram. But it is Correctional Officer Week. Yeah, week. yeah. So, 
cheers to all those guys because they're in there with the the bad people all the time and uh they got to separate their life their work life from their family life stuff like that and i know that's difficult so cheers to them cheers to them dink um they i i believe i posted a video my buddy uh nick who who's a correction officer for state he uh posted it and i was trying to copy it but it was uh it just it talked it showed like a little bit of like the academy and everything that it showed like them inside the prison and everything and um and then it stated the the suicide deaths and it, it stated like the um just the statistics of you know what those guys go through and um i was listening to it's needed a few weeks back and they had a correctional officer on there who's who's now a cop and it, it's funny because a lot of people are like um they're not law enforcement they're not law enforcement i'm like well yeah they don't really have arresting powers but they are a big part of law enforcement you know if it wasn't for them the system wouldn't work and you know it, it's like i consider them law enforcement you know and i believe like if you're state you're actually a sworn peace officer if i'm correct right yes yeah cdcr they're sworn yeah but they don't have basically um i believe if i'm correct i mean correct me if i'm wrong on that you're basically a cop in the jail and outside the jail you have no power at all correct um i think that's right unless you're transport yeah i'm not yeah. sure how cdcr works but that, i mean that sounds right yeah and me do, form having done that i mean i could tell you it is not an easy job a lot of people think it's like super easy and just like with police work they're like oh they just sit around all day no that's just what you see that is uh when they're in their car they're probably writing up a report um on their days off to get called into court um the same thing with uh correction officers you know they'll get called into court too especially if it's something that happened within the building and it and it's like let's just say it's like a um um, a parole hearing or whatever they might call in a correction officer and say hey how was his attitude in there you know he's saying he's up for parole is this true is this going on then you, you, yeah he's he's he, he was good you know or no he was bad and you know you gotta remember uh people don't like going to jail people avoid going to jail um these guys volunteer to essentially go to jail to do their job uh they basically go to serve time uh, at least 12 hours a day every day that's essentially what they're doing the only difference between them is they get to go home at the end of the day and they get to freely walk or the rock around the, the the jail or the prison and it's uh it mentally does um jack you up sometimes and i could i could personally vouch for that so um i i hope when people you know see the correction officer like appreciation stuff that they don't just like um you know, oh, whatever, you know, those guys have it easy or whatever. It, it's not an easy job at all. And my hat's off to all of them. You're a man of few words right now. Oh, I thought, I thought we were moving into the next, <laughs> next thing. I was waiting for your cue. You're waiting for my awesome segues. Yeah. Um, let me see what I got here. Let's see which way I could segue this bad boy. Um, oh, yes. You know, speaking of prisons, let's talk about another prison, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> the world's biggest prison. Yeah. And they're. It's, uh, it, it's, it was never escaped from LA or New York. It, it was escaped from North Korea. Snake Plissken has got nothing on North yeah. Korea. Um, so there's been a lot of rumors flying around saying that Kim Jong un is dead. And. Uh, uh the, the there's been some memes too have you seen any of them oh yeah like like a uh, weekend at bernie's one the what a weekend at bernie's one where they had them holding up like the cover of weekend at bernie's but they're holding up uh oh uh, yeah a weekend at kim's um yeah and there's another one that says well we know this if kim jong-un is dead the obesity rate in north korea just went down to zero <laughs> <laughs> wow and yeah. what's funny is is that's true. Yeah, because yeah, they're a starving country. Yeah. Um, 
but I looked at a new story from like, I don't know, 15 hours ago and the state media is what they call it. Just released video of Kim Jong-un cutting a ribbon at a fertilizer plant. And they said, look, he's still alive, but there's nobody that can confirm that that video is like recent. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. Sure, well, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Yeah. I've heard he's, he's trying to fake his death so that he can see who's going to come out against him and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I mean, if you think about it, if he's gone, then it's probably a sister that takes over. And I've heard that she is worse than he is. Yeah. Which is kind of a quandary though, right? Cause it's like, uh, we don't like him, but out of like all the leaders, he's the only one willing to like talk to like uh, an American president and, and it, but at the same time, you're like, so if he was to say die or, I mean, that's the only way he'll leave power is die is essentially what it is. Um, we could get someone worse or we could, they could, there could be like an uprising where they're like, you know what, this whole, this whole communist thing, man, you know, it's just not doing it for us. Let's, let's, you know, lean to somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's weird because, you know, like with all that propaganda, they could, that could, that could have been a stock footage for all we know. We don't know that. Yeah. There's no way exactly. to. I mean, the thing I heard originally was uh, they go, they said, see, he's alive. He visited a, re a resort and it's his signature on it. And it's, and it said, it was like a handwritten letter and it said something like, uh, you know, uh, I'm at a resort and it had a signature <laughs> on it. I'm like, I, I, I promise I'm at a resort. I'm, like, I'm still alive. I don't think signed so. Kim Jong Un signed. Get in my belly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but he, um, I, I think the reason why they're thinking he was dead was because his, he moves by train throughout North Korea, which is weird. Um, it's like snow piercer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he moves by train um, and his train has not moved. It's been like at this one location for like the past two weeks. And some people are saying uh, that he's, um, in hiding to try to avoid getting the COVID. Maybe he's a germaphobe. It could be. Well, I mean, I heard the guy's like a chain smoker. Yeah, I heard he's he's got some bad health issues too that make him more susceptible. Yeah, and but what's weird is like I thought I thought North Korea was essentially like lockdown, like you can't visit it right at all. That's what I thought. I mean, they shoot people that try to leave, so. So how did they get the coronavirus? I don't know. If they don't want anybody in or well, out. Oh yeah, but there's China and North Korea are like buddies. So, so can, can Chinese travel there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's how it is. And I was thinking like they're just over the wall, spitting over the wall. Like, <laughs> We're gonna give you the COVID. You know, that's South Korea's weapon. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they could probably spit further than they uh, can launch their missiles, apparently, because I've, I've seen uh, um, Steve-O get launched across the lake further than they can launch their um, missiles. So, or was that? Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of a premature explosion. Hold on one second. Um, so, yeah, but he, he, is, uh, he is something else. Um, I'm surprised we haven't heard from Dennis Rodman. Why does he talk about him a lot? Oh, he's friends with him. You didn't know that? No. Oh yeah. He went over there and visited and like, oh. talked to him. I guess like, uh, Kim Jong Il, his dad was like, not Dennis Rodman's dad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> his dad was like a big Chicago Bulls fan. And, huh. um, and so they, they basically, um, ended up, um, he couldn't like, convince Michael Jordan to come over. So he's like, we'll get the next best. Yeah. Not Scotty Pippen. <laughs> no, not Horace Grant. We're going to go with, you know, Dennis Rodman, you know, because he was dating Madonna or he dates, he did a lot of, about that. He dated a lot of weird people, but he's yeah. like friends with them. So I'm surprised like he hasn't gone over there and like, or reached maybe, out. Like, maybe he's in mourning right now. Could be. Yeah. 
you know, who knows? I mean, Robin's just a weird dude anyway. Yeah. Um, so no cheers to you, Kim Jong un, if you are still alive. <laughs> um so um I'm gonna kick this off uh with something that we were gonna talk about last week and totally spaced on. Um I uh, no, you just say we, we ran out of time because we had so much to talk about. We did have a lot to talk about actually. Okay, take two. I'll edit this. <laughs> Okay, our next thing we're going to talk about <laughs> is um, something that we ran out of time with last week. Um, and, dude, I, my phone is blowing up right now with text, and it keeps getting rid of my screen. Um, so we here at The Real WTH Show, we don't believe in uh, cancel culture at all. Um, but we will disagree with people and personally choose to not um, go – shop at places or you know go to places based on certain people's beliefs but we're not gonna oust them. Tommy, yeah i i know we've talked about it before but you might want to say like what cancel culture is okay or you could have <laughs> so put me on the spot rude well you, you're so, the one talking <laughs> so basically um let's just hypothetically say that um there's a company um acme whatever company and they come out and they're uh against uh their pro gun life. rights yeah, gun rights you know they think uh, people shouldn't have guns and instead of me just being like well that sucks um i go out and i just like stop don't shop at that place don't and we're petitioning in front of their building and we basically run that um business out they they the business dies and they they fall apart you know you basically ruin someone's life based on their beliefs um i don't want to say ruin their life uh, you make their life a living hell essentially what you do based on their beliefs, which I don't believe in because we all have our own beliefs, you know, cause I may believe something and someone else may not doesn't mean I'm right. doesn't mean they're wrong. It just, you know, we just believe different things and that's okay. That's fine. That's America. We're allowed to do that. Um, so when I say uh, we don't believe in cancel culture, we're not, we're not even going to mention the business um, or where it's at. Um, we will say that it all we'll say is it is local. That's all we'll say. Um, but this, uh, the owner came out and he, um, you might have a better, uh, understanding of what is exactly what it says, but I'll paraphrase it. He said he doesn't consider, um, like firefighters or police officers heroes because it's part of their job. And he would basically, cause you know, if it's in their job title, you're not a hero. You're, um, you're just doing your job. But like, if like, I was to like save someone, I'd be a hero because I'm going above and beyond. And that really struck a nerve with me, like really bad because um, I would love to see that guy last one day in any of those jobs that he considered not a hero. And, and he's getting a lot of backlash already. So people are already doing it. I'm just, I'm not going to be any part of that. Um, and he, uh, He's standing by it though. Um, he's, I, I just don't know why someone could actually come across like that and say, they're not a hero. They're, they're not heroes. I'm like, man, do you ever like see what they do? Like, have you ever, ever been in a position where you have to make a life or death choice? I haven't. Well, I mean, not to the extent of, you know, like what most cops do, you know, like I had a, like you have probably made a, a bit more of a life or death choice than me, Wilson. Yeah, with I your, have. With your robbery that happened. Yeah. Um, and those guys deal with that all the time. That's their job. And you, you don't see a lot of behind the scenes stuff that those guys go through, especially in uh, a jail setting. Like I was only up, I was only working there for what, a few months. And man, I was, my life was threatened so many times, <laughs> you know, not, not just by, you know, uh, uh, you know, the inmates, but like just mental stuff, well, not like, you know, suicide, but like, man, like it, it could have like dragged me into a depression, which it did. Um, but you know, he doesn't know what those guys go through, not calling firefighters hero. Um, uh, that, that struck a nerve with me too. Um, okay. Then you have fun pulling that dead kid out of the pool and then, and you go home to your kids and try to put on a, a normal face and have a normal relationship. 
not calling these people heroes. Nah, dude. Like that's what the definition is. And on that note, um, you know, it kind of struck a nerve with me as well because um, we have two different aspects, right? We have that guy who's saying, um, you know, those people aren't heroes. Yeah, all week long, I, I, I'm almost wondering if this is why I was in a bad mood this week. This week, people were like ultra thankful for me doing my job in a store and like thanking me. And then like, they're putting like signs out in front of all the grocery stores that say heroes work here and everything. It, it, I'm, maybe it's just weird for me. It, it's starting to irritate me because um, that's not what I am or what I think. Yeah, I appreciate, you know, the those workers, right? I really appreciate them. But the word hero is thrown around so loosely. It is, I believe it is dedicated to those who put their lives on the line every day for us and those who have done a heroic act not just someone who's just normally doing their job like me. So, and then, then that would side with him, right? But well, they're doing their normal job, but they're putting their lives on the line. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the grocery people, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, you have to be out there working. I guess you could say, no, I'm not going to work, but I mean, I, I don't equate it to the same as like a police officer or a firefighter. Um, the, there's just the, the job description is different and it, it's so different because like, it, are those grocery people going to run into like gunfire to try and, uh, stop the threat when everybody else is running away? Like, I'm sure there's probably some people who would, you know, but that's, that's not like, that's, that's not what they're supposed to be doing. They're, they, they're just working in a grocery store. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I respect them for still working and everything, but it's just not the same. And the the, the good thing that I saw, because um, all this stuff was put on Facebook, um, and there was a lot of people that came to the defense of firefighters and police officers yeah. in that post. So um, it's good to know not everybody thinks that way. Like, you're entitled to your own opinion, sure. Um, there's just some things that strike a nerve and that's definitely one of them. Yeah. And then we'll, um, I'll segue that in, with uh cancel culture into, uh, you know, uh, you know, it was with, you know, we said the hero thing and what happened yesterday at the Capitol, um, with the protests, um, everyone that was there at the Capitol, I drove by it early in the morning before everything started just because I was kind of curious to see if they had anything pre-set up. But, you know, there was a huge rally yesterday at the Capitol um, because people here in California, we want to reopen. Um, we're not, and we're not saying just everything go back to normal at once. We're saying, you know, hey, you got to loosen some restrictions here. Um, you said we're going to flatten the curve, right? Well, we did that. Now you're adding restrictions. Like, what's, what gives? Yeah, that's what I don't get. Like Costco. Costco didn't require a mask until after things started getting better. Yeah. It, it's, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. All my stores are doing that now. I'm like, well, that's funny. Nugget has been doing that since day one. Nugget is like the only store that I think is like, has it, has had it right. Yeah. And all the other stores are like, Oh no, now we're requiring them. I'm like, okay. But if this thing is quote unquote at its weakest, why are we now just now doing that? I mean, maybe it's because like, we don't want to, we want to lessen the threat to have it come back. Right. But um, I was watching some protest videos and I had like an internal battle with myself, right? Because um, we all know that I'm pro law enforcement. And, uh, and like I said before, that doesn't mean like every single cop I ever see, I think, oh, this guy's the greatest guy. Oh my gosh, this guy does no wrong. Because there are bad cops out there. There's bad firefighters out there. There's bad, there's bad pastors out there. There's bad, just, there's bad people, right? So I'm here I am watching um, the people that I'm siding with on the, you know, the protesting side. And then I see all these CHP officers circling the Capitol in riot gear is getting screamed at by these people and people yelling at these CHP officers, calling them tyrants and stuff. I'm like, gosh, dang it, man. That was an internal battle for me because I'm like, those cops, I know like 99% of them agree with the protesters. 
they also they got to do their job. And then they're all, well, your job's, uh, you know, uphold the oath and everything. Right. But their job is also like CHP's job is to protect, you know, the capital. That's, that's their job. And they weren't violent. Um, yeah, there was 30 arrests. And sometimes those arrests are usually they're just like sight and release, you know, and, and they're just like, you know, like, Hey, you, we're just, we just ask you to go back and then you, you weren't listening and you're, you're, you're getting too close. And, you know, we just, they wanted a peaceful protest. And I think the reason why CHP was there um, in such heavy presence is because um, there was rumor that Antifa was supposed to be there to, to shut it down, which Antifa loves this because half those guys don't work anyway. They're living in their mother's basement and they're collecting that stimulus check and they're loving this. This is what they wanted. They're, they call themselves anti-fascist yet. They're the most fascist people ever. Yeah. And so they're, I think they were afraid it was going to get out of hand. Right. So they're like, okay, well, let's just, uh, you know, let's just break this up. So all they're doing was just pushing people away from the Capitol to the steps. And all the videos I saw, uh, the CHP officers just kept asking, hey, guys, can you just please go back? Can you please go back? Uh, if someone would fall down, I, f- I saw a few CHP officers say, hey, are you okay? Are you okay, man? Are you okay? They were, they agreed with them, but it was like their, you know, their job, their responsibility. And I felt really bad uh, because I'm like, man, like all those guys is getting yelled at right now. Granted, they can handle it. That's their job. I mean, they, they, they're getting yelled at the academy. That's why they get yelled at academies. Because if you get yelled at, have like five DIs yelling at you single in your face, you can handle one protester. It's easy. Um, but on that note, people are upset. People are complaining. People, um, I, I, I agreed with the protest. I, I don't know if it did any good, but that is our right, you know, our right for peaceful assembly to protest and everything. Um, and on that same note, going back to the cancel culture, I also don't believe in doxing. Do you know what doxing is, Wilson? Something having to do with documents. Close, but no. Alex. Near. Um, it's basically where you release the address of someone. Oh, yeah. So there was going to be. I just thought that was called releasing someone's personal information. Well, no, that's what that's what you, you um, you know minions call it us people up here we call it doxing okay um so they were going to want to because governor newsom lives um five minutes from me like the next street over his house is down there um and uh there was going to be a protest that was going to start in my town and they were going to walk to his front door (laughs) let it be known i do not like newsom at all but I don't believe in going to his house where his family lives and scaring the crap out of his kids and wife. Yeah. I don't believe in that. Um, You could protest at the places of government, which he wasn't even there at the Capitol yesterday. He was in Rancho at the operations of emergency services building. He's, I don't think he's been in the Capitol for a while. Yeah. But, But you protest at the Capitol. That's why it's there. But so I look at the whole doxing thing like cancel culture. If you're not if you're not happy with something, man, protest it, but don't do it to where you're going to endanger someone's family like that. Granted, I don't like him, but his kids did nothing wrong. That's why I got so mad when people were coming after Donald Trump's kid. I'm like, dude, that kid did not ask for this life. You know, he he, he probably hates it, honestly. Um, so I don't know. I just saw all that yesterday. And then I was just like thinking of the correlation with the cancel culture and with um, the, the doxing and um, just with the protests. I'm like, man, this is like, it's getting pretty ugly. I mean, a lot of people are, there's a lot of people fighting right now. Um, I had a good friend unfriend me the other day um, because of the whole thing. And I'm fine with that because if we can't all uh, just talk like adults and just agree to disagree and then just have casual conversation, if that's only one sided, then it's not worth my time. You know, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm nothing you're going to say is going to change my view. I'm not going to change your view. So let's just get on. Let's just move along. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was very interesting. I mean, there was protests happening all over. I mean, I mean, all over really Michigan, Michigan, that one was intense. Did you see those videos? Yeah. People standing at the Capitol with, uh, guns and everything. They were in which, the Yeah. And like, that's, that's not right. I don't agree with that. Like, 
Well, I, I think gun, guns aren't allowed on Capitol grounds, period, correct? Regardless I don't, of, I don't know how other states are, but in California, yeah. Any state building, you cannot carry a gun. Uh, yeah. You're not supposed to. Even if you have a CCW, you're not supposed to. That's what I thought, yeah. But, yeah, that, that was intense. Um, and then I heard, didn't she just, like, ground them for another two weeks or something like that? Yeah, and, and see, and that, that's what, where, I, where I think um, we're at right here in California is it's like, it's, you know, you and I are both parents. Like, we talk to our kid, right? We're like, hey, you need to stop back talking. You're grounded for a week. And they start back talking again. And you're like, do you want to make it two weeks? And they say something, you're all great. You're grounded for two weeks. That's essentially what's happening right now is, you know, people are protesting and they're saying, We're, we want to go to like Huntington Beach. We want to go to a beach. And there's videos and the pictures, you can see it, where they are socially distanced. But if you take the camera angle at eye level, it looks like thousands of people. But if you go aerial and look at the same picture, they're actually spread apart. Beaches are long. They're big. And, and so there, he's, he got so upset by that. He's like, you know what? We're going to close all state parks and all beaches. I'm like, why? Like, 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 why? And then, like, we're dragging this out longer than we need to be. We flattened the curve, dude. That's what we, that's what we agreed to do that we would do and we did it let's slowly open let's open the small businesses back up let those businesses actually um enforce their own social distancing rules like the stores have been doing all the stores i go into now are limiting the amount of customers and um we could just we could go in there yeah, you need to take a look at that um it, it's kind of funny speaking but, of huntington beach that's your sister my sister sent me a picture yesterday and she is on the beach in Huntington Beach with a police helicopter behind her and <laughs> in the like air. Two, sur two servers out there. I wonder if she'll let us post that picture to our Facebook. That's funny. Yeah. But, uh, you know, what I was saying is, is it's, um, it's all a matter of, I think people are just being power hungry right now, um, mainly in the Capitol building. And right now I'm not happy with any politician. Like this is getting out of control. Um, I'm, I'm more happy with the counties, the way the counties are handling it. Cause the counties are like, you know what? No, we're going to open, we're going to do this. And then, um, you know, we'll see you in court and we're not going to enforce it. Um, did you see the story about the gym in Sacramento? I, okay. I heard, oh, I heard they were opening, but then I also heard they, they closed because they're threatened to get a fine for a thousand dollars a day. Uh, I don't know. Cause last I heard their lawyer said yeah they are violating these constitutional rights and there's nothing they can do we'll take them to court and i heard that he had like 50 other businesses trying to jump on board with it yeah well um, i mean we could go on all day about that um let's go to something more fun yeah and i'm sure it we're we're, we're this isn't the last that we're going to end up talking about this so we could say the rest for other days but um, first, I want to say something that happened to me the other day that was horrible. Um, and speaking of having to wear masks, um, we, uh, you know, if you wear a mask, you know, people are like, oh, it doesn't do any good because you can still smell things through it. Yeah, but if everyone's wearing a mask, it's just limiting the amount of exposure you have, you know, people coughing or whatever. So I was at a store and I walked by a homeless guy. I think I told you this story. And he, he was just hanging out in a store and I walked by him and, he, and I was still six feet apart, by the way. And the smell of that guy got trapped under my mask. And I'm like, I started like gagging. I'm like, ooh, ooh, like, like in the mask. And I had to like take the mask off to air it out and put it back on real quick. And I'm sitting there coughing and people probably thought I had like the COVID or something because it's <laughs> so bad. But I'm like, and I noticed that because I'll be walking in a Walmart and someone will walk by me that just smells like weed. Next thing I know, I'm like, my whole mask smells like, you know, a dispensary. Yeah. And I'm like, oh gosh. I was like, like I got to tell that story. That was pretty funny. Um, but before we get into the, the main thing, I want to touch on something real quick. Oh, great. Did you hear about the, uh, the new um, Pentagon video? No. Oh, we're going conspiracy theories, huh? Supposedly, they found UFO footage. Oh, I heard about that a while ago. 
Well, no, they just, the Pentagon just released it. Yeah, they were supposed to as part of a program. Yeah, uh, that was uh, um, head up by Tom DeLong from Blink-182. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which, if that doesn't get any weirder. <laughs> huh. Um, but the, uh, supposedly they, they have footage from, um, uh, they have, uh, it's like footage, I think it's from a plane. Where they're trying to chase down something and it just takes off on them? Yeah, and they're like, is that a drone? What is it? I'm like, well, drones don't move like that. Drones move like a plane. Yeah. I mean, unless you're talking about like a personal, you know, phantom drone, like like what you buy, you know, at like Walmart, you know, they could go left and right really quick, but not that fast. Yeah. So, I don't know. I saw that. Was, oh, that's pretty, pretty interesting, actually. Huh. Um, so... I just wanted to do a little tidbit and get out of the way, knock that off my list of things on my phone. So now go, go to a different conspiracy theory. So um, I want to introduce you to someone real quick. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cats and kittens. Oh, hey there. Yeah. Yeah. Carol Baskin. Killed her husband. Whacked him. So we're doing our Tiger King episode. It's about time. Yeah. So uh, you, you finally finished the episodes, I'm guessing. I finished them like two weeks ago, but there was so much to talk about. Oh. Um, so just a forewarning, there will be spoilers on here. Um, if you haven't seen it yet. You uh, should have. Yeah, watch it. Um, it's not for kids, but it's a, if you like watching train wrecks, watch it. Um, so a little synopsis on... Um, I, I, if, if I could even do a synopsis on this show, it's kind of hard. So you have a guy, his name's Joe Exotic. That's not his real last name, obviously. He owns a, um, it's the GW Zoo in yeah. uh, Winwood, Oklahoma. And so he's basically, uh, he, he calls himself the Tiger King. So he has a bunch of tigers, alligators, animals, bears, everything around there. And then you also have um, Carol Baskin, who owns like a tiger sanctuary in Florida, then you have another guy named uh, Doc Antle who owns uh, a tiger sanctuary. I forget where he was. And so there's basically a bunch of different places where the people have these little sanctuaries for tigers. Well, um, Carol Baskin is supposedly like all goody goody. Right. And she's like, takes, she takes the tigers there. And that's the place where she lets them run almost free where they just die, live out their life. Right. And then, you know, but, uh, Joe Exotic does like these tours with them where he goes like malls and magic shows with them. And it, I'm telling you, it goes weird. Yeah. Uh, and petting zoos with these animals. And you're like, okay, that's cool. So that's, that's the, that's the battle is just them uh, doing that. That is such a small part of that show is the tigers itself. It's it, it ends up being murder of mur accusing a murder um suicide which was really hard to watch yeah um you don't actually see it but when you see that dude's face yeah i'm like dude that was real like when you see the look on his face when he watched it but um there were so many moments in that show i'm like like what like is this like is this the same story it's like you know how like you watch seinfeld and one episode doesn't run into the next it was kind of like that i'm like this is the same people. There's so many different angles that are happening here. Um, but uh, yeah, th there's a, uh, the thing that I don't get is why did I not hear about any of this? Like on the news? I don't know. Part of me, honestly, this is dead serious. Part of me thought that uh, Netflix put out a show um, a year, a couple years ago called American Vandal. I'm not sure if you've seen it. It was, um, supposed to be like a real life mockumentary on a um because netflix was having a bunch of true crime stuff come out like documentaries so they wanted to make their own uh to make it seem as real as it is but it wasn't real at all and all it was was a guy who was spray painting penises on cars and they're trying to find oh. out who, who did that who did that i thought that was real no it's that's oh. part of me was thinking that this tiger king thing was fake like like it was faked up they put out a show and um i could basically there if you want to know the 
if you haven't watched it yet and you want to know the characters of the show, um, if you've ever been to a recycling plant, you've seen every character in this show. A so, recycling plant in like Alabama. Yeah, like so Carol Baskin is the per the lady who you get your uh your money from after you turn in your cans. Joe Exotic is probably the guy who's you know running the forklift. Um Doc Antel owns the place. Then you have the uh um what's his name? <laughs> the guy that talks like Dash, you know. You, what, you know that guy? Uh he's oh, like, the director guy. The director guy. Um, that guy is the guy that actually lifts up your cans and puts them on the scale. That's him. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, but, but then um, Joe Finley, the guy with no teeth, he's the guy that also um, helps him lift the stuff too and is always yelling at the other guy. So basically you could find every character out of any recycling plant, but particularly at like Alabama or something. Yeah. Um, but what did you think of the show ultimately? Like, um, did you know anything? I mean, you said you didn't know anything about – the story but when you went in to watch the show did you hear anything t anybody talking about the show or did you go in like right when it came out um my wife watched like a couple episodes before i started and um she was trying to explain it to me and i'm like i'm totally lost like i have no idea what you're talking about and then it i started watching it and i'm just like this there's no way this is real and then like i looked into it and yeah this this all really happened and i'm wondering I, I i just wonder why this didn't get more publicity when it happened yeah well i actually went online and i looked up uh see wasn't g because the zoos are still there uh well the joe exotic zoo is like a new zoo now because he got bought out by this guy and it it has this whole other thing and and joe exotic's in prison right now but um doc antel his uh tiger sanctuary uh he mentioned something in the show he's like yeah man it was like it's like you know 350 for a ticket well three dollars fifty cents that's not bad <laughs> like that and i looked it up no three hundred and fifty dollars just to go there and look at tigers and i'm like are you serious? And then in the show, you hear this one guy goes, yeah, this is my third time this week. I'm like, how the heck do you get that money to go there three times in a week? Seriously. Um, but um, supposedly uh, Carol Baskin had a husband um, who went missing and um, Don Lewis, Don Lewis. And they're saying that they think he died like in a plane crash off of coast of Florida um, saying something about like how he was, um, like involved in something or whatever but like if you like watch um this show um she's basically uh almost identical to hillary clinton her voice her mannerisms and even down to maybe disappearing people <laughs> um <laughs> she's uh you know she even mentioned sometime she, what was that thing she said she goes yeah we you know you know like all you gotta do is rub sardine oil on it and then you know the cats will eat it yeah i'm like uh, oh so you've uh, thought of this before yeah that weird laugh <laughs> yeah she laughs at everything and her husband man like to her new husband that guy you know who wears the pants in that relationship is definitely her because he's just sitting there and like i'm like this dude looks like he's hating life like he's like huh. his smile looks fake and he, i'm like dude like he's wearing like this weird cat hat and there's some weird people in that show. And then they did like that follow-up. Did you end up watching that follow-up? I watched part of it. Yeah. It was weird. It was like, it was a zoom call with, um, um, Joel McHale, the comedian actor. And he was interviewing all the people in, in the show, except for Carol Baskin and Joe exotic. Um, and basically everybody doesn't like, nobody likes Joe. Um, no. but there is, there is, there is one guy in that show that I actually, kind of liked um i thought he was actually a decent guy who do you think the guy is was it the long-haired dude no he was weird the stoner guy not yeah him. i don't know then it was a guy that had his uh legs get amputated because of the zipline accident oh yeah yeah he seemed he seemed like a pretty decent dude because he's just like he's like man i just you know Every, he's like he basically says in the show like everybody's stupid 
<laughs> yeah. And, and then, I mean, even like his accident, you're like, wait, you got your legs like amputated from a zipline accident? Like that's, you don't ever hear these stories. Then you have that one um, uh, girl or guy, sorry, um, who got her arm bit off by a tiger. Yeah. And what was weird is you actually see that, but it's like that part's blurred out, but she's like calm. She's like, yeah, my arm, you know. That's called shock. I'm like, uh, <laughs> and rumor has it, she's now in Def Leppard. What? That that was a joke, right? Yeah, but it actually kind of fell flat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the ghost inside, but I can't I can't ridicule our cheers segment. I know. <laughs> so Carol Bass. Yeah. Um it was it, it was a it was a good show though. I was like at first like m- my wife and I were like, I don't know, it seems stupid. But it's literally like you're watching a train wreck. You're like, uh like how's this gonna unfold? And and I knew majority of the story already, um, because I listened to a podcast <laughs> beforehand. Um, but I when you actually see the people, that's that's you gotta see them. Yeah, um, let's just put it this way. Joe Exotic, everybody's seen a picture of him. He is a um he's gay. Yep. Um he has a mullet and like an eyebrow ring that's like barely hanging on for dear life. Um he walks with a cane and has a leg brace and a gun holster that's hanging down by his knee and he wears like sparkly sequins shirts. Yep. <clears throat> that's the best way Okay, imagine Siegfried and Roy's show, like literally, even with the Tigers, um, but he has a mullet. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's, um, dude, it is, it is something else. Yeah. Um, the, the, and then the memes that came from the show were... On point. Yeah, some of the best ones I've ever seen before. If people were to say, ask me, like, when, when I have grandkids, and they're going to be like, Grandpa, how did you survive the, the Kung flu? I'm going to be like, well, kids, we had these things called memes. Yeah. The memes made me laugh, and that's what got me through, and they were about the Tiger King. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're on point. Definitely on point. Uh, doing this show, though, I think it, it brought more publicity to it. So yeah. it got out there, and I, I heard that they are now looking into Don Lewis's death again. They are. And was it his lawyer? I think it was Don Lewis's lawyer. I think he said that he thinks, he personally thinks that he died like in a, in a plane crash. But they're definitely looking into it because there was so much stuff going on, like so much criminal activity. Uh, like yeah, that. it's amazing, like, how how deep it goes. You know, like – like apparently in other states you can just have tigers which is weird but there are still laws like they were killing tigers and some people would have little baby tigers and once they got to a certain age they just go kill them because you can't (laughs) because you can't uh you can't make money off off the big ones as much as you can the little ones right and 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 dude there was that one guy i don't even know what his part was he had that monkey on his shoulder in the interview. Oh yeah. Dude, that monkey was rad. <laughs> like I wanted Until it him. rips your face off. Well, those ones don't grow that big, but those are the ones that carry the diseases like in the movie outbreak. Yeah. Um, but man, like I, I'm telling you, there's a lot of animals and I'm, I'm also if you're an animal lover, um, don't watch it. You, you don't see the animals get killed, but you do see dead animals. Um, aftermath. Um, Especially yeah, uh, when the were they talking about? Was it on there that they talked about where the animals got loose? Somebody let them all loose. Yeah, that was a different. I remember that story that happened. Uh, I think that was pretty close by in another area. But he was like, I think, planning on um, killing himself, and so he let his animals go free. And the cops show up, and they're like uh, having to shoot these tigers. Yeah, and, and bears and it, could you imagine though dude like you go to a call for possible domestic next thing you know you have like you know tigger running at you but, <laughs> but like wanting to fight you and blue and, and blue and 
um, Mowgli is just in the corner. Yeah. I can't remember the snake's name. Yeah, I don't know. I think the snake was Scarlett Johansson in the movie. <laughs> um, the snake's name is Gavin Newsom. <laughs> oh, shots fired. Oh, oh man. Um, so, but yeah, it's a, it's a great show. Uh, it, it definitely, uh, if it did one thing, it took my mind off of the craziness that's happening in the world right now. And I appreciate that. Even though it's at the expense of other people and their um, unfortunate life events and life choices, you know, and um, you know, if you guys could actually count how many teeth um, you see total in the show, you'll probably have eight. Yeah. Cause except um, in the, um, the finale, the last uh, bonus episode, John Finley had a whole new set of chiclets, dude. Yeah. But he, ha- he is talking differently. I'm not sure if you noticed that. <laughs> He's not used to it. But the weirdest part for me was when they interviewed the dude in the bathtub. Oh yeah, that guy. That that's that's the that's the main reason why everything went to crap because that guy was the quote unquote supposed hitman who backed out. Yeah. And then he's just like in the bathtub, and they're like, "Why? Why is he in a bathtub like right now? It's just weird." I mean, you don't see anything. But he's just like chilling in the bathtub. I'm like, some choices were made that day, and <laughs> I don't know. But I and I feel kind of bad for that director guy in a way. Well, because he was the director because. To make it, uh, everyone understand, there was actually two shows being recorded. You had the Joe Exotic TV, which that guy was a director of. And then you had the documentary, the Netflix thing that was going on kind of behind the scenes. So it was like a documentary of the documentary. Yeah. And um, that dude like lost all his footage in a fire. Which I'm pretty sure Joe Exotic started himself. Yeah. And it killed like a bunch of alligators. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's gators. Yeah, gators too. Yeah. Um Oh, and then do not to mention uh like the polygamy with Doc Antle. Okay, how how is it that the most normal person that they interviewed in that show was the wife who got away that does like weird yoga stuff? I forget what she does, but it's something weird. But you're like, "Oh yeah, there's the normal person in the show." Yeah. Yeah, it, it was weird because it's like, man, it's like you see Doc Antle like rising out of a river on an elephant with like two women on it. And it, nobody in that show has just one partner. Yeah. Everybody has multiple partners and it's so weird. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, and that's not, that's not even Oklahoma. I mean, Doc Antle's somewhere else. He's not even in Oklahoma. Yeah, I think he's on the East Coast somewhere. And, and he's, he, I don't know if he's even a doctor. He, he, he's a, they're, what are you a doctor of? He's all mystical science. Yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, right on, dude. Then, I, then I'm the doctor of podcasts, dude. That's what I am, dude. I'm a <laughs> Tommy Hartman, PhD, podcast, something, something. Something, something. But yeah, like, like I said, if you, if you want um, your mind to go in other places where you're just like, what did I just watch? Why? like this is so weird and forget about the craziness that's going on watch that show you're not going to regret it it's it's it, it takes you down some rabbit holes and i mean i did some research on my own um you know with uh like i said like with the prices of the places the zoos are still open they're still doing their thing and then now that like you said they're reinvestigating um you know carol baskin we're still investigating her yeah um but uh, th- oh and not to mention a Joe Exotic country singer. Oh yeah, or is but he... but not really. I did not know this part. Was... They didn't mention that part in the show at all, right? They did in the finale. <clears throat> oh, but they did. I, but what's funny is they mentioned that like in the third episode on the podcast, so I already knew that going in. So oh, we're going to talk about it, and um, you'll just be watching the show, and you'll be seeing like joe exotic yelling at some tigers and then all of a sudden uh it'll bust out this country music video i'm like what like and it's like a legit (laughs) country music video and like i'm like that dude could sing yeah and then do the funeral where he just starts busting out singing at the funeral yeah and then like after his um travis the one that killed himself uh after uh you know that whole thing was done and then joe exotic got married to the other dude 
the younger guy he invited like the mom of the dead guys to the to the wedding and yeah that's a little weird i was like and she even said she's like yeah i don't know why i was there i'm like why do you even everybody's so weird (laughs) dude i'm telling you there's like so many different angles that's why it's such a hard show to explain i'm like yeah it it is it is what it is yeah it it seems like that show would have like premiered on jerry springer or something yeah but actually be real yeah um but man check it out though it's it's, it's some good stuff right there so i think we're running we're about an hour in i think i think we're good somewhere Uh, around there so um yeah um thanks for listening everybody um again check out msrarms.com um show ryan some love um, I think you could even, you know, if you just want to support him by buying a hat, I think he sells his hat on there too. Maybe I don't know. Or, you know what? Just ask him, say, Hey, how much is a hat? And maybe he'd be like, yeah, I don't know this much, you know, go support the small businesses right now. Cause that's what we need. Um, and you know, especially the small businesses that, you know, support us. Um, you could check us out on Facebook, Instagram, untapped, all those other areas, um, at the real WTH show, especially YouTube go, uh, Go show our YouTube channel some love. That's the one that we have the least amount of people floating on. I think it's because everyone already hears the show. They don't really need to watch it. Uh, But like I said, I'm trying to like put in like outtakes and stuff that you don't get on the show, on the podcast into there. So people could see, you know, what it is. Um, Especially when we, when we do our live shows, once we do our live shows, uh, those are going to be a little bit more uh, visual than audio. So um, and you can reach us at 916-259-3030 and our email at the real WTH show at gmail.com. And I think that's all I have, my man. Yeah, me too. Um, anything else with, with you, Carol? Hey, are you cool cats and kittens? I don't know why she always says that. It's the only thing she says. That's it. That's it. So until then, ladies of the men, Jay. I will talk to you then or I'll talk to you another time. Jobin.